Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to point out a few web pages, websites um, that have been around for a very long time, uh, probably way before any sort of Facebook, uh, social media, before YouTube, things like that. And basically around the time when I was getting into the hobby and all we had was, you know, just simple websites. These sites are still out there, these pages, and they're kind of buried and not many people can find it because most people will do a Google search or go on YouTube to find information uh, about their Volkswagen, uh, whether it's a bus or a Gia, a Beetle. And I get a, a bombarded on a daily basis of questions from people. And a lot of the answers are, of course, out on the internet. If you did do a little bit of search and Google is your friend still, but I even did some Google searching for some of these pages to bring back up again. And I had to, I had to hunt a little bit you know, to get them to come up again. Uh, so they are getting buried and they are going down the first page uh, ranking. You know, some of them are on the second or third page of Google. So I, I wanted to point some of these out. I'm going to leave links to these pages in the description below. Uh, but you might find this intriguing, find this kind of interesting that these pages are still out there. And what I'm going to do first is talk about Wolfsburg West. Now, I, I'm not affiliated with Wolfsburg West. I don't get any money from them. But I do recommend people go to them to for their parts. They have a really good parts section. They pretty much offer you know some of the best stuff on the market, and they really don't give you the alternative for the crap that's out there. They kind of stick with the good stuff. But Wolfsburg has a newsletter, if you signed up for it, called Wolfsburg Wired. And I think it's pretty good. Every now and then this newsletter comes out. They say it comes out every month, but I don't see it monthly. Uh, every now and then it does come out. Now, if you look at Wolfsburg West website, I mean, you can tell this is an old site. Uh, it's probably a good 20 plus years old. Um, but I guess they kind of go by a philosophy. If it's not broke, we're not going to fix it. And if it's still bringing in revenue, it, it is what it is, right? So you can sign up for the newsletter. But there's a few pages that they have on their website. And I, I even went to their homepage to see if I can find these pages off of their homepage or any other their links that they have. And I, I really couldn't find them. And one in particular that I like that people ask me about are taillights. So let me see. Here we go. Now, this page is probably a good 20 years old. But I think it's an invaluable page when it comes to, say, a very early Beetle. And you want to know what kind of taillights were on your early Beetle when you know, the years where they change them from point A to point B, that kind of thing. And here on this page is a taillight link. And they show from starting in May of 45 to 49 and going all the way up through the split window era and to the heart taillights, okay, and then even into the egg taillights. These are my taillights that I actually have on my 54 convertible. I've had a few bugs in my past that had the egg taillights, super rare light. It's only a, like a six-month only light, and it was really only offered in the American or Canadian markets. And then, of course, we know about the, the honeycomb, and then the 62 to 67. We saw the differences there, you know, that kind of thing. So, this this is really buried on on the YouTube searching. Um, I had to find this again, but if I did I did a Google search for Wolfsburg wired uh, tail lights, and then it came up. But you had to know to put in Wolfsburg wired in order for the search results to come up. So pretty damn cool that they break this down for us and to show when all the changes were. So people ask me about taillights all the time and when things changed. And I think this is a good link here to take a look at. The other issue that always comes up and one of the big questions I always get from people who need help is about their horn. My horn is not working. I hit it. It doesn't, it doesn't honk. Or I turn my directional on and the horn honks. <laughs> so many times I am diagnosing their problem over the phone when Wolfsburg Wired had an article, Beetle Horn Troubleshooting. So you can do a search for that for Wolfsburg Wired. You can also do a Google search for Horn Wiring Hell, <laughs> VW Beetle. And there's another a great page that comes up talking about uh, horn wiring. But uh, Wolfsburg lays this out really nicely. 
They talk about the common issues that happen, why they malfunction. And then, of course, they give you a diagram, uh, a, a drawing showing the different changes throughout the years and how the horn is set up and how it changed. So, again, buried information out there. It's there. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's a good 20 years old, at least. So... We'll get rid of that, and we'll get rid of that. Now, I, I did mention once before, Robin Day's air-cooled uh, Volkswagen pages. I put in Beetle through the years, the changes. Like So if you ever wanted to see what the, the changes were per year for your Volkswagen, this is another great page. Again, it's been around. If you just look at the page, this is something out of the 1990s, 1998, maybe Y2K era. <laughs> But you know what? It, it's still relevant today. It still works. And also there's dedicated home pa uh, pages just to certain year Beatles. Now, two that I know in particular, 1966 Beatle, VWBeetle.com, it's all about the 1966 bug, which I, I truly love the 66 bug. It's kind of got some one-year uh, pieces on it as well, similar to a 67, one-year stuff. So another great website, if you're into getting it to a 66, this is a good website that breaks down for you. Colors, seat upholstery, everything about the 66 that you would need to know. Again, doing a Google search, you could try all different years, but these two stand out. I was trying to find, there used to be a, a page just dedicated to a 1958 Beetle. Uh, I have I had trouble trying to find that. I don't know if that website's gone by now. If anybody knows where that is, please uh, leave it in the comment section below. And then, of course, my friend Eric Shoemaker's website, 1967beetle.com. He has now converted it to aircooledartifacts.com. So Eric does do his own parts. Um, he restores uh, fuel pumps and things and uh, air cleaners and things like that. So... His site all dedicated to 67 Beetle. He's got articles. He's got a whole bunch of stuff um, and custom restorations that he does too. I guess if you needed something restored, you can send it off to him. We can restore your VW Porsche German engine components. So pretty damn cool. I guess you just pop him a, a, an email there, but he does restore fuel pumps. And again, period correct stuff. So we did through the years. Now, also, uh, the next topic I'm going to talk about is the semi-automatic Beetle, which is, you know, they were pretty popular, I guess, to a point. They're not as popular as, of, of course, the manual. They were from 1968 to 1974 Beetles. As rare as they are, they're not necessarily more valuable. Um, a lot of people want to convert the, the semi-automatic to manual. Uh, but if you ever in the know or want to know more information about a semi-automatic Beetle, uh, Robin Daves also has a, a section here on their website dedicated to the semi-automatic Beetle. But there's this other page here, VW Automatic Register, VWAR.org. I had to find this again in a Samba post. I did a Google search for this, and I, I could not find it on the first page. Uh, this is dedicated to just the semi-automatic Volkswagen, and uh, you can get some decent information here. Of course, the Samba is another great resource, been around for a very long time. You go into their forums here uh, and just do a, a search. And they say if you put in a search for semi-auto bug, and there's a plethora of a whole bunch of posts that you can click into. And then those posts will have more links and yada, yada. So you know the drill there. But uh, definitely look into this one if you have a semi-automatic and you need some help. I don't know when the last time this was updated. Um, again, it looks like something out of the early 2000s, late 90s era. So, and then uh, ovals only. If you have an oval window beetle, there's a website called ovals only. Uh, I, I believe I met this guy once when I went out to California. And I actually have his catalog or he's got a book on ovals only and about all the details of the oval from 53 to 57. So that's another rare site. Again, an old site. 
that you can click into. This is the handbook that I actually, I actually bought this book. And so I have this on hand, valuable information there. He gives all the details of the different changes for the years of the oval and also their sales figures, which was good too. So that's about it guys. I just wanted to make a short video here that there are sites out there that are old sites, but still very valuable, very, in, you know, uh, important. I hope they still stay up and don't get lost through the bowels of the, the internet changes and, and get flushed down the internet toilet, so to speak. Uh, I hope they stay here uh, because a lot of times the information is there. If you just do a little bit of digging, uh, you can definitely uh, uh, still find these things. I'll leave again the links in the description below or in the comment section. If there's any other pages that I missed, uh, just for the sake of the, the length of this video, if you guys have more sites that you want to point out that have good information that are maybe tough to find or rare sites to find, uh, leave them below. And uh, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. All right, guys. Take care. Uh -huh.